has to this time been pardoned, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Like Mary, who showed humble surrender. Like Joseph, who exhibited unconditional trust. Like the shepherds, who displayed awesome wonder. Like the angels, who sang glorious praise. For all who are willing to receive the gift of the Savior, born in Bethlehem, Tonight, we light all the candles. The first candle is the hope shining for those worn thin by times of waiting. The second candle is the hope shining for those worn down with wearied souls. The third candle captures the hopeful expectation of those eagerly watching for God's glory in our day. The fourth candle is the hope of a new tomorrow, shining for those seeking freedom from the wounds of this world. And tonight, we light the Christ candle. This candle radiates the hope of Jesus Christ to all who are willing to receive it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and those who are watching on the recorded recording of this Mass, today we celebrate a light in the darkness, but not everyone can see it. John the Evangelist had to explain it because the world did not recognize Jesus. God is indeed here among us in human flesh. We are invited to see this amazing light and help others to recognize it too. Now I invite you to please make a quiet examination of your conscience and with the sorrow in your heart for any sins that you may have committed since your last confession, and with the full resolve to sin no more, confess these sins now quietly to God.
And now please say the second form of the Trinity with me. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. On this blessed night, uh, and as an act of uh, kindness, as an act of love and caring for others, I would ask you during your prayers, during this Mass, to please offer a special prayer up for somebody that you know personally, somebody that you know personally that is searching, searching for love, searching for truth, searching with a hurting heart, a broken soul, and I ask you to pray for them that they may be able to find the joy that exists in those who believe and place their full faith and trust in Christ our Lord. He is the resurrection. He is the life. He is the joy that has come into the world. There are so many people that are hurting in the world today, especially during this period of COVID-19. But we can reach out, and through our prayers, we can help someone. So I ask you to pray for someone that you know personally during this Mass. Pray for their healing. Pray for their coming to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I ask you to do this as a penance for today's confession. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I do absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, bless his name, announcing his salvation day after day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now let us rise and give glory to God.
A reading from the Old Testament book of Isaiah the prophet. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as men make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They named him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful, from David's throne and over his kingdom which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. salvation to all men. It trains us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. It was He who sacrificed Himself to redeem us from all unrighteousness, to cleanse for Himself a people of His own, eager to do what is right. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be over their flock. 
The angel of the Lord appeared to them as the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were very much afraid. The angel said to them, You have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you, tidings of great joy to be shared by the whole people. This day in David's city, a Savior has been born to you, the Messiah and Lord. This is, let this be a sign to you. In a manger you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in my heaven, peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. This is the Gospel of the Lord. sisters in Christ Jesus our Lord. Merry Christmas. Christmas. There you go. There you go. That sounded pretty lively. And it's such a joy to have, this is, I have to tell you that since this started, this business started in March, and except for two funerals, this is the largest crowd that we've had in church since March. We, we're just one short of 40. One short of 40. Wow. I sure hope we can get back to even more. This will, it'll be good when this is all over. Uh, I hope you're enjoying. It's 841, so midnight mass will be starting in uh, about three hours, I guess. But this is midnight mass. If you want to go to midnight mass somewhere, I guess something will be open somewhere. Uh, I thank you also for being so uh, obliging when we said that we would be changing the time of the Mass because we just felt that this would be a more appropriate time considering this whole matter, matter of COVID that we're dealing with. And one of the concerns we had was the fact that the governor of Massachusetts set forth a, uh, a uh, uh, what is that it's called? A curfew. He set forth a curfew. And we didn't know whether that would happen or not in New Hampshire, but if it could happen one state over, we figured, well, if we have the Mass at 8 o'clock with the choir singing at 7.30, then, you know, we should be okay. And I just want to share with you a, a, a short message. I hope you'll take these booklets home. We can't keep them, right? They have to, you have to take them with you. So I hope you take them home. I hope you meditate on them. I hope everybody has an ornament. Please take that with you too. If you don't have a calendar, we've got calendars too. But there's one thing that I want to point out in the Mass booklet today that you'll be taking home. You know, Christmas, the celebration of Pastetica, it's traditional. Uh, the, the meal that we have with our family, even in this COVID time, 
We're trying to make everything as traditional as we can. I know in, in our family, we had the Vigilia dinner uh, at five o'clock. We would have had it later, but uh, five o'clock because of the, uh, uh, of the uh, earlier time of the mass. But all of us, all our families, are trying to do everything that we can to maintain those traditions because they're important to us. And the Holy Mass is just as important to us. And for those of us who have grown up and have been reared in the church, this is one of those Masses that you know backwards and forwards. You know that we're gonna start with the, with the Nativity scene and it'll be out here for a couple of weeks and then it's gone. And then after that, we go to the Advent candles. And then after that, we go to the Mass. And you know the liturgy because you've experienced it Depending on your age, some of you close to 80 years, you've been experiencing this or more. Me, 66 now, but I don't remember the first five. Kind of hard to remember those first five. But I was in church for that first one. And the readings are something that we recognize too. There's nothing new about the story of the good shepherds in the field. I shouldn't say nothing new, but we understand that story. We've heard it a lot. I want to direct your attention to the second reading, because even in the reading from Isaiah, that first line is so common. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. I want to go to the reading of Paul's letter to Titus, because I think it says something real important for us, even at this time. It says, the grace of God has appeared, offering salvation to all men. If you remember, during the penance, when I, when I pronounced, uh, asked you to do the penance, I said, please pray for somebody that you know personally. And if they're hurting, if they're, if they're searching, if they need Jesus in their life, pray for them. In fact, pray for yourself, because it might be you. And it's so perfectly okay to ask God, help me, I'm searching for you. Show yourself to me. But the key to all of this is the way that first sentence ends in the letter to Titus. It says, the grace of God has appeared offering salvation to all men. God isn't forcing anything down our throats, but he's offering us salvation. He's offering us joy. He's offering us peace. It trains us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly. Now, you may say, or people who don't believe might say, well, that's all well and good, but with what? I don't see how uh, salvation to all men is, is going to make my situation now with this virus and the people who are suffering, how is that going to change anything? Well, the key is in the word offering. Jesus is offering the gift to all of us. The gift of his salvation. The gift of his love. The gift of his hope. The gift of resurrection. The, the gift of salvation. The gift of eternal life. He's offering it to us. The key is, do we accept it? Or the question is, do we accept it? Because if we accept his love, if we truly accept it in our hearts, then it's gonna change our entire experience, not only with COVID, but just our whole life. It'll change things. The, the, the negatives that were part of our life for so long, well, they're still gonna be there, but our perspective on them is gonna change. It's really true. God offers salvation to all of us, and it's there because he loves us. In fact, in that same portion of the letter to Titus, if you go to the top of the next page, page 11, he continues on. That it says, as we await the blessed hope, because we believe that Jesus is coming again, it says, the appearing of the glory of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ it was he who sacrificed himself for us to redeem us from all unrighteousness and to cleanse for himself a 
people of his own. Jesus gave his life on the cross because he loves all of his creation. He loves each and every one of us. People that we don't think are lovable, Jesus loves. And all he ever asks is, accept me. I'm not forcing myself on you, but if you accept me, I will bless you. I will fill your life with richness and hope and happiness, and you will have a different perspective on COVID. You will have a different perspective on sickness. You will have a different perspective on death, because death is just another doorway now to Jesus, to receive him in his, and to be a part of his righteous kingdom. We rejoice in this day, in, or in this night of the Christmas Eve, because it's a reminder to us about how God took human form because he loved us, and he's offering to us the gift of happiness and eternal life. All we have to do is accept it. And once we accept it, and we live our lives as though Jesus is there with us, it will be remarkable how those lives will change and how God will bless us. Because he loves us. The grace of God has appeared, offering salvation to all men. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us rise, and let us together proclaim the faith we share. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. to govern the earth. Receive, Father Almighty and Eternal God, this immaculate host, which I am worthy servant offered to you by the living true God, for my countless offenses and missions, for all present here, for our nation, and for all, as well as for all faithful Christians living and dead, and for all humanity, may it be for us a means to salvation and everlasting life. Lord God, you are with great dignity and worthiness, and through Jesus Christ, who exalted, renewed, and sanctified us through the mingling of this wine.
Father, accept our gifts on this joyful feast of our salvation by our communion with God made man. May we become more like him who joins our lives to yours. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, 
in order to manifest his inf infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of his love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his Almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chal chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask of Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. We remember all of those who have died this year as a result of the COVID-19 virus. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever.
Mary, together with your blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and also Andrew and all the saints. Grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. What shall I return to the Lord for all the graces he has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. As we prepare to receive Holy Communion, there are those of us present in church who are practicing quarantine and they will not be receiving, but they desire to receive Jesus. Therefore, let us together with them say this act of spiritual communion. Let us pray together. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. 
I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the table of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed.
body and the blood of Christ.